Good morning, Grandma. Good morning, Eric. I keep remembering the words of my grandma when she said, What? I said, do you have any last thoughts for me? Last thoughts for you? To do the right thing for yourself and to become some, uh, somebody big and important and everything should work out the way you want it to. That's it. Little did I know those few words would become my compass for the next five years. My name is Eric Sapperston, and this is my story. We were born to dream our dreams. The year before I arrived in this world, my father had a stroke. He was only 28 when it happened. My dad lost the use of the entire left side of his body. It seemed other kids had strong role models to guide them to success. My father was disabled and angry at the world. I thought our family was cursed, and that I too would probably have a stroke at age 28, or even more dramatic, I could die. Living with this uncertainty has led me to reject the idea of guarantees and five to ten year plans. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of not living. So after graduating college, instead of getting a job, I bought a bus and decided to follow my heart. I'm taking my dog Jack, and we're going to see America. Good morning, America, how are you? Say, don't you know me? Ask your native son. I'm the train to call the city of New Orleans. I'll be gone by. When you spend your life with a bitter man, you learn a lot about what you don't want to be. I want to be someone who gets up in the morning excited and goes to bed fulfilled. It occurred to me this trip was the perfect opportunity to talk with people who do just that. What made you do this? My parents weren't really wealthy. Uh, my father's paralyzed. My mom's a nurse. You know, when I came to them about a lot of big decisions, they said, you know, we just don't know. So the quickest way for me to understand how things operate is to go to the very tops of industries and talk to a CEO and talk to a president of the United States and go, hey, what is it like to be you? And if I wanted to be you, how could I do that? It's just amazing. I called my mom and dad and they said, you just spent time with Jimmy Carter. Did you videotape that? And I'd said, no. And they said, that was stupid. On the road, I bumped into others who felt disconnected and who were searching for purpose in their life. I soon realized I was no longer taking this trip. It was taking me. Now this is a phone call. Mom, I quit my job and I travel around the country with some people and a dog and a Volkswagen bus. She didn't take it very well. This, I think, is the first time in my life that I was really challenged to do things that I've never done before. I studied criminal justice in college, not cinematography. The first day that Eric and Paige and David picked me up, I looked inside the bus and <laughs> I thought to myself, all four of us and a dog are going to be traveling in this vehicle. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Woo! Damn, that's fire. We just slept in some random hotel parking lot by the beach. We like staying at the residence in parking lots because then if you get up early enough, you can time it and get a free continental breakfast. Well, let me tell you about our project. Um, the people on the other end of the phone get pitched thousands of ideas a week, and their job is to say no. As we've traveled all across the United States and we ask young people, who, who should we go see in America? They consistently say Bill Gates. Um, what I need so that I can move this up the food chain is some kind of written request that indicates what you're doing, how it's going to be used, and the kinds of things that you're interested in talking to them about. I, I will be frank, it is extremely unlikely that you're going to get an interview. As a kid, I would ask my dad if I could go to the movies, and he'd never say yes on the first request. I'd have to ask over and over and over again. I thought, what an asshole. But maybe he was just trying to see how I'd deal with the word no. Tenacity is an art form. If it does not pan out to hook up with Bill Gates, maybe we should have Microsoft become the official sponsor of the journey, providing us laptop computers. We have never rolled out laptops 
for something like this. We don't even really need laptops as much as cash. We travel across the country and you have a VW bus and we're tent camping. It's easy not to be taken seriously. Just because I have a bus, you want to talk to me about reefer? So we have really tried to become the Ritz Carlton of campers. We do without a lot of luxuries. The cappuccinos are not one of them. I have making a, a fruit drink with some oh, almonds in it. Oh, Sounds wonderful. wonderful. Sounds Sounds great. Great. Sounds Sounds wonderful. Great. When somebody that we've met only hours before invites us into their home, it just gives me this great hope for humanity. This is an absolute pleasure. Oh, don't get silly. This is oh, so wait. cool. I'm doing really well. Grab my show. Just elated. How are you? In such a dangerous time, people are still willing to take strangers into their home. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, now get the hell out of here. <laughs> We've been interviewing leaders all across America. Jerry Garcia, the, the director of the FBI. Remember the Fonz? Henry yeah. Frankfurt. No way! Yeah. Cool. I don't claim to be an expert, but I want to be a conduit. I want to build a bridge between those people in our generation who are eager to learn and those people who are very skilled and knowledgeable who want to teach. Is it time for love? Is it time for healing? Why am I working so hard? Like, why do I... I'm asking you. The reason I'm working so hard might be that I don't know what else to do. You're not sent here on this earth to spend your uh, life in drudgery and service. You're going to do a lot of that because you have to earn a living. But the main thing is enjoy. We're going to go get wet. I can get all screwed up downtown and I come back and jump in the ocean. Everything's all right again. You get one good wave, and everything's okay. <laughs> I'm struggling with what I'm doing here. Why am I here? I believe there is no tremendous meaning in life. But human nature has it that we want to be meaningful people, so we create our own meaning, I think. What I'd like to know is how to be happy because I see a lot of people that are maybe 40 or 50 years older than me who seem really happy and really peaceful. We've been married 56 years. Secret is love and trust. I have a different opinion. What's yours? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd really like to know from someone who's a little older and wiser is what's bullshit and what's the real deal. My father, so intimidated. that he took away from me any chance for me to trust in that generation ahead of me so that I never had a chance to get the kind of leg up that I want to give you. Well, I was alone, long before. And so we talked a little while And then I shook his hands and I First moving violation, nine and a half months of travel. I feel like I just want to get out and just, just shoot people. That's that's a, you put a quarter in the meter, quarter in the meter right now, quarter in the meter. That's not my fault. I was a victim. I was hit from behind. It is completely 100% without fail your client's fault. Your insurance company's not going to pay you for this. You have liability insurance and a $25,000 deductible on anything else. Campbell, 11 just about like we're playing. Someone have some money? Money is to be spent. What? If you got it, spend it. Where are we going to go with it? We're all going to die. You're not going to live forever, especially you fat stuff. Everything is wonderful. This is utterly ridiculous. It's a Capperston household. Humor is fun. Humor is survival. Yeah, no matter what you do, you're just dead or in a scum. <laughs> if I only had one sentence to say to somebody about life, it would be, trust the process of your life unfolding. Henry Winkler's office. This is Henry Winkler. This is Henry Winkler. Oh. Will, will the real Henry Winkler please stand up? I am convinced, because I'm so excited to have you all on the phone. <laughs> now, how are you all? Are you eating well? 
<laughs> well, that's always questionable. Jolt Cola, the unofficial sports drink of the journey. We definitely have good times together, but every time one of us makes a mistake, somebody's there to call you on it. Why is this happening, David? Explain to me why this is happening. It's not because I'm not... When I was growing up, my father would say, quit making excuses, Eric. There are no excuses. I hated that when I was a kid. I will go and spend three hours in the middle of the day with Paige at tears, being there for her and giving everything I have to Paige. And I will do the same to David and I'll do the same to Kathleen. And I'm just tired. I've, I've struck bottom. What do I do here? Never give up your power. You're very powerful people, we all are. And once you start giving that up to somebody else, then you're done. You're at a crossroads, Dave. You can either stay on the bus or get off the bus. We have taken a project that already is difficult and have made it more difficult for us because a project that struggled with four now struggles with three. Sometimes, in order to create change, you have to have disaster. You gotta be jerked to your knees once in a while in order to stand up straight. Watching my best friend walk away was one of the worst days of my life. I started feeling sorry for myself and then thought of my dad and how he struggles every day and still manages to go on. The job of the warrior is to find the good stuff in the bad stuff. Everybody wants to go out in the park with a flashlight and show you all the dog shit. The warrior is looking for the dog shit with the flower growing out of it. You say, look at this dog shit with the flower. My father left. Everybody looked at me, you know, like if I had all the answers in the world. And you look back and you don't see your dad or your mom there anymore. And all of a sudden, you're the dad and you're the mom or you're the grandpa. And you're the one that's supposed to know everything. And you know, and so you, you think, I should have listened more. <laughs> After meeting all these people, I'm starting to think we're a lot more alike than we are different. I thought my father was full of shit, but maybe it was just me who wasn't paying attention. Mark Twain said it over a hundred years ago. When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant I could hardly stand to have him around. But when I turned 21, I was astonished at how much he had learned in seven years. You guys gave me a lot of energy. You gave me some new life. There's hope out here. To the journey. To the journey. Cheers. Now go home, will you? Please. And get them cold. <laughs> <laughs>